like we were talking about in that previous rant about the training and not specifying particular muscles uh, in terms of training, but to specify particular movements and getting better at those movements, when you're trying to correct posture, there's another misconception in that you can target specific postural muscles in order to mold the person back into a good posture. So for example, the rhomboids, just by uh, like intuition, you would think that because the rhomboids go from here to here, if I work out rhomboids, I'm going to pull what the, the origin and insertion together. Okay. Now, in real, in real, uh, real life, that doesn't really happen. While you're doing the exercise, sure, you're pulling the scapula and the spine together. But when the person is at rest, it's not like the muscle becomes shortened at all times. Okay? So it's the whole idea that exercising a muscle doesn't necessarily leave the muscle shortened. So if you have bad posture, if he has bad posture like this, you can work out your rhomboids for the next 10 years, and it's not going to make him walk around like this. Similarly, if you work out your biceps for 10 years, you're not going to walk around like this. So it's not going to automatically shorten the muscle. Unfortunately, we're not Gumby, so we can't lengthen ourselves and then shorten ourselves. That's not how it works. The reason is, is because people tend to think of muscles as the, the, as the tissue that you're targeting. But in cases of trying to change posture, you're not targeting muscles. What are you targeting? Nerves. You're targeting nerves. You're targeting the neural drive of said muscles. So the only way to keep those scapula in this position is to increase neural drive to the tissues that would hold them in that position. Okay. Now, does exercise increase neural drive? It does. If you do a lot of exercise in these, these muscles here, you will have the ability to increase neural drive. However, what's more important in increasing neural drive is conscious reminders to increase neural drive. So when you're talking about rehabilitating someone's posture, the most important thing that you can do is provide that person with postural cueing. Postural cueing are reminders that will tell him, set your scapula, set your scapula, set your scapula, over and over and over. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to take a conscious decision of set your scapula and translate that into an unconscious increase in neural drive. The body has an amazing way of, of taking re repetition and sets normal at whatever that repetitive motion is. So for example, if you're repetitively hunched over, the body will adapt by keeping you repetitively hunched over. How? You'll lose sarcomere length in the anterior musculature the posterior musculature will remain with less neural drive in a lengthened state. In order to bring this person back, you have to uh, increase um, the ability to expand the anterior line, you have to improve neural drive to the posterior line in order that the person will hold himself in this position. Now, why do I say don't train individual muscles? Because people who want to train posture, they always think that in order to change glenohumeral posture, the focus of your exercising should be here. Okay, So I want to train my rhomboids. I want to train my trapezius, my mid-lower trapezius. That's fine, but the most important thing governing posture in the, in the upper back and in the neck in a seated position is not this. It's this. Okay, So what do most people do when they sit? They sit and they slouch. So let's just slouch like this. Now what happens when he slouches? First thing we're going to do is we're going to notice that he has an anterior head carriage. Second thing that happens is that we're going to get internal rotation of the glenohumeral joints, shortening of the anterior line, lengthening of the posterior line. Third thing we're going to do is we're going to lose our nice lumbar lordosis, which is the, very important for, for lumbar spine health. Now, without worrying about this, if all I do is increase his lumbar lordosis, and translate his pelvis forward, what happens to his cervical spine? Automatically, the anterior head carriage is corrected. Automatically, the amount of glenohumeral internal rotation is reduced. Automatically, we get a good a kyphosis to lordotic position. So the key cue here for your patients is to always sit with a good lumbar posture. And the cue that I use is to introduce the patient to the PSISs. So 
talk to them about those dimples here and how I always want the PSISs to become closer to the inferior angle of the scapula. So I want him to set the scapula by drawing in and pushing down, approximating the PSIS to the inferior angle. Okay? So I'm going to get you to slouch. Then I'm going to point out the inferior angle. I'm going to point out the PSIS, and I'm going to say approximate these two spaces. Automatically, posture becomes uh, improved. Now, do I want the person to sit like this for a long time with no uh, support on his back? And do I want him to consciously always hold this posture? That would be a bad idea. Because the reason why people change their postures when they're seated is to give some postural muscles breaks. If you were to hold this all day, you would start to develop a lot of problems in your spine. So I want him to practice this movement, but when he's sitting into a chair, I want to teach him how to sit so that he uses the chair back to maintain this posture. So if I get you to come over here. Now, <clears throat> he's a chiropractor, so he sat properly. But what most people do is they'll sit away from the back of the chair. So they'll sit into a chair like this, and their body will automatically round in order to find the back of the chair. Okay? Now some people who their, their therapist has told them, taught them how to sit properly, they might sit away from the chair back in a good posture, or they might be told to sit on a stability ball because it maintains good posture. But I guarantee in an eight-hour shift, eventually, this is going to happen. Okay? So, what do you do? Stand up for me. You teach the person, just face that way, that when they sit, they're going to sit butt first. So, butt goes into the back of the chair, and now they sit back. From this position, it's very, very difficult to slouch. If you tried to slouch up here, it would be very uncomfortable. Okay? So, he's using the chair back. I don't mind if people sit in this position and lean on one chair rest or the other, uh, the arm rest because that's how they give themselves postural breaks, but they're not maintaining that forward slouch posture all the time. Of course, this would necessitate bringing the chair closer to the uh, desk, especially if you're doing computer work, because you don't want to have to reach for your computer. Uh, it would necessitate having arm rests so that your arms are not just hanging if you're doing computer work. You want them to be sitting on top of something, right? But it's the butt first sitting posture that's most important. And what will happen throughout the day is their butt will start to creep forward. So you need some kind of postural cueing to remind them to readjust, stick the butt to the back. And that can be done with, um, uh, if you get little stickers, a pack of like little stickers, and you put one sticker on their computer screen, you put one sticker on their um, dashboard in their car, and you just have postural cueing so that that unconscious uh, postural cueing will eventually, sorry, the conscious postural cueing will eventually be unconscious. After doing this for, you know, months and months and months, you'll realize that the patient will always sit in the proper posture it's just because that's what they're used to now.